Hey guys, welcome to the first video of the first front end nano degree project. This video is dedicated for the personal blog website project. Here we're going to talk about your submission. How can you pass your submission from the first get go? Of course, your submission is going to be evaluated based on five different sections. First, you have the structure, the design, the layout, the responsiveness of your code, and finally, the code quality. Now let's talk about the structure. Here in the first specification on the structure section, we're going to have that the first point talks about how your portfolio should be complete separate structure from your design or styles, meaning that all your static HTML files should be completely separate from your design styles, your design CSS files. Later on, we're going to see that in another uh, specification that clearly states that your HTML files should be in a separate folder from your CSS files. The second point clearly states that there shouldn't be any attributes between the um, opening and the closing of your body tags. And the third and final point means that you shouldn't have any elements inside your project's document. The second specification in the structure uh, section talks about how you should have at least three imported files inside your main CSS file, meaning that your CSS file that is linked with your main HTML file should have at least three imports. The search specification in the structure sections clearly state that your file should be organized with a directory uh, structure that separate file based on page and functionality. This is the specification we were talking about in the first specification in the structure section. This specification clearly states that your project files should be organized based on the functionality and your pages, meaning that all your HTML files should be in a separate file and a separate folder um, from your CSS folder. So you can't have all files laying around in the root directory. You should have all your HTML files inside a folder and all your CSS files inside a whole nother folder. And now let's talk about the final specification in the structure section. This specification clearly states that inside your project, there should be an intentional user flow, meaning that your project, the pages of your project, they must have something like a door between them. The project, uh, the user needs to be able to move freely between all your pages. Now let's talk about the design. The first specification in the design section clearly states that you should have your own custom images, layouts, and styling. This specification is made for students that who would copy um, CSS code from, let's say, another project or an online project or uh, copy the layout of another uh, project and put it inside their project. You should not do this. You should have your own custom images, layout, and styling. The second specification in the design section talk about how you should have at least three unique properties in each selectors, meaning that in each selector you should have headers, links, quotes, bold, italic, and underlined text, and finally you should have at least three colors meaning that this is mandatory by the way you sh you can have at least three unique properties from here but of course in the project implementation we're gonna apply them all but let's just say here you should have headers from h1 to h3 you should have links quotes 
bold, italic, and underlined text. Of course, we're going to implement all of this, but this is one of the specifications that students won't pass uh, the project submission because of it. You should really focus on this. The second specification clearly states that in your project, you should have image, image captions, buttons, and cards. This is also one of the specifications that most students won't pass because they would probably um, apply images, buttons, and forget the card and the image caption. You should have all four of them. You should have images, image captions, buttons, and cards. In the later on uh, specification, it's going to clearly state where the, um, the submission wants you to put your images, your buttons, and your cards. But right now, you should know that you should have all four of these. Okay, this is one of the main problems of this project. Most students won't pass this because of this specific um, specification because it really it's really hard to follow. Here it says that you should have two main pages. You should have the blog home page and you should have the blog post page. Inside your blog home page, you should have a nav bar, a, se uh, a section for your blog post card, and a footer. Here you should have a nav bar and inside your blog post card section, <clears throat> you should have a card, an image, and buttons, okay? And finally, you should have a footer. Inside your post page, you should have a header, and let me focus on, you should have here a header. Inside your, your, the home page, it clearly states that it wanted a nav bar, and here it wanted a header. This is a clear indication that the project submission wants you to put a header tag and here it wants you to have a nav bar tag you can't have a header tag and uh, call it uh, sorry you can't have a nav bar tag and call it a header and you can't have here a header tag with a class nav bar and it's and it's gonna pass this is not gonna make you pass so you should also focus on this also another section is that you should have an author info section. You should have your name, title, current comp uh, company or school, short bio, and an avatar. You, you should also focus that you should have all five of these inside your author info section. You can have more, but you can't have less. So you, sh you should focus on adding all these five sections inside your author info. And finally, the social sharing section. You should have links to your Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn accounts. Of course, this is also one of the, uh, the main problems that most students won't pass because they, all, they always put like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram uh, links. You can have Instagram li uh, link here, of course, but you should also have LinkedIn link. You, you should, you must have also uh, all those three links, but you can't have less. You can have more, of course, but you can't have less. And finally, this specification says that you clearly need to have a home page and a post page. You can have more, but you can't have less than these two pages. For instance, you, can com you can't combine these two pages in one page. Your project needs to be more than two pages long. Okay, now let's talk about the layout. This is one of the easiest um, section in this uh, project, and here's why. Your layout section is divided to two specifications. The first specification says that you should have at least two display flex inside your uh, your project. So you should have at least two of these inside your entire project. It doesn't matter where you're going to put it. We're going to put it in the home page, in the blog page, it doesn't matter. The second specification says that you should have display grid inside your project. You should have at least 
two of these. So you can have more than two, but you can't have less than two. Now let's talk about the project responsiveness. This is also an easy section because inside this section, the project specification clearly states that your project needs to be mobile friendly. It needs to be user friendly so users can um, interact with it. It needs to be presentable for users in all different display sizes and viewports. And finally, we have the quality section. The quality section is one of the sections that also students won't pass because of them, but from the first look, you think it's going to be completely intimidating, but it's actually a very easy section. Your quality section divides to five different specifications. The first specification clearly said that you should have HTML semantic tags, such as header, footers, and section. Of course, you by default, you're already going to have these semantic tags inside your code because in the previous specification, these project clearly states that you should have a nav bar, a footer, and a header tag. So you clearly gonna have these semantic tags inside your project. The second section says that you should have um, CSS classes and IDs to each dev and section selectors, meaning that you shouldn't have any devs and, se and selectors with, without meaningful classes and IDs. Inside the second specification, we see that all your code should be lowercase and your code should not have any trailing white spaces. Of course, all this is going to we're going to implement it and I have a really cool trick that is going to fix all of these, like all the entire quality section is going to be fixed with one really easy trick. So you shouldn't really go through all of this because it's all going to be, you know, fixed uh, inside the project implementation. But I just want to focus on two main things here, which is that all your code should be lowercase. So you shouldn't have any uppercase inside your code. And when you're uh, and the quotation consistency, so the quotation consistency is one of I think it's one of the most important topics in programming in general. Meaning that, let's say you are using double quotes, okay, and you want to put a single quote. So, uh, sorry, you want to use another quote inside of it. So. Basically, what it means that if you're using a double quote, you can put another double quote inside of it. You should have a different quote, meaning that if you have a double quote, you should use inside it a single quote. And if you're using a, a single outer quote, you should use a double inner quote. Okay. Here it says that your HTML document should have the I doc, uh, the doc type HTML. Of course, this is. This is by default is going to be already on your code and your code should not have any attributes unless it's in the style sheet, which is meaning that you're basically says that you shouldn't have any scripts. You should have all your styling or your CSS in a separate folder. And here it says that you shouldn't have any trailing white spaces and again with the uh, the uh, consistency of your indentation and yeah basically all of this is going to be fixed with the trick that we're going to talk about inside the um, in the second video so you really shouldn't go through all of this this is also one of the sections that most students won't pass because of that but we're going to obviously implement the trick that i told you about and it's going to fix all of this thank you for watching